Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our gospel lesson from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the twelfth chapter, his account of the triumphal entry. This is the text. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord Christ Jesus, especially Catherine and Anna and William, this is an exciting day, and you don't have to be confirmed today to recognize that this is an exciting day. I've always found something especially exciting, especially uh, enjoyable, especially charging, I guess, about Palm Sunday. I got kind of a view of this whole service that uh, I wish everyone could have. Walking behind the procession, I got to see aisles of people waving palm branches, and if I really put just a little bit of mental effort into it, I could picture myself in Jerusalem entering triumphantly with Jesus Christ. Today is about triumph. It's the triumph of Jesus Christ as he goes to claim his crown in Jerusalem, the city that is his by birthright. It's a triumph that his disciples got to share with him, a triumph that even the people of Jerusalem got to share with him. Those who had witnessed the resurrection of Lazarus and now got to own Jesus Christ as their king and their God, who took palm branches off the trees, palms being the, the sign of victory, and got to wave them before him to celebrate his victory as he entered triumphantly into Jerusalem. It's almost fun to be a follower of Jesus in that kind of a situation. But then we add to that the fact that today you three, Catherine and Anna and William, are being confirmed. Well, you've spent three years studying the Word of God with the small catechism as the textbook. You've learned Christian doctrine. You've had a chance to ask me questions that you might have. We've gotten to discuss these most important questions in the universe. And now, after three years of instruction, you are ready to examine yourselves to determine your worthiness for the Lord's Supper. You can evaluate your lives on the basis of the Ten Commandments, your special callings according to your place in life. You know what Christ has done for you, taking on human flesh, being made man for us so that he might give up his body and his blood on the cross for our redemption. You know that you have been baptized into His holy name, that through baptism you are His own children who have the promise of eternal life in His name. You know that He instituted Holy Communion for your forgiveness, life, and salvation. And you are now prepared to receive His true body and His precious blood for your forgiveness, life, and salvation. It's a special day. But then, of course, we've added some things to it. And we have some, uh, some nice trappings in the sanctuary. You yourselves are dressed up pretty nicely today, looking good. You have a whole congregation that is celebrating with you. Your families are very proud of you. There's going to be a reception after the service. We are going to celebrate you today and thank God for what He has done for you, calling you into His church and making sure that you can become communicant members at Holy Cross. Today is an easy day to be happy. It's an easy day to feel that sense of triumph, of jubilation. An easy day to claim Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, to say, yes, that's the one, I'm following Him. The one that everyone is waving palm branches for. The one that we're all glorifying. The one for whom we're singing, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes, it's easy to follow Jesus on a day like today, on Palm Sunday on the day of your confirmation. But what about the week to come? You know what Jesus entered into Jerusalem to do. He entered triumphant into Jerusalem to die as a criminal, to be condemned to death and nailed to the cross. And he did that not for himself, but for his neighbor, for you, for your families, for all the members of Holy Cross, for the entire world, Jesus put the needs of this world above his own needs. He put your needs above his own and went to humiliation and death upon the cross. Now something interesting that we note when Jesus was condemned and crucified, nobody was with him. He was on the cross by himself. Plenty of people were willing to process with him into Jerusalem at the triumphal entry, but who was willing to go and be with him on the cross? The only two people who joined him were there unwillingly. 
the two thieves, the robbers, one of whom took the opportunity to blaspheme Jesus, one of whom, thanks be to God, found the Savior of the world crucified at his side and knew that he had salvation in Jesus Christ. But those are the only two. Some were willing to come to the foot of the cross and speak with Jesus, but most were like refugees, hiding out, terrified, not wanting to be identified with this Christ, with the man whom they had been so pleased to claim as their own just a few days earlier. We have an especially moving record of that with St. Peter. Remember what he did on the night in which Jesus was betrayed during his trial? Three times he was asked, if that's your friend, is that your Lord? And three times he said, no, he's not. Three times he disowned his Savior Jesus Christ. Three times he did the opposite of what you are being asked to do today, which is to confess Jesus the Christ, to confess Him as your Lord, to confess yourselves as poor sinners in need of His redemption. We are called to confess, and you are given the opportunity to confess today, not to deny. But there will come a time when you will be tempted to deny. You will be tempted to deny by conforming your lives to the lives of the world by living the way we see our friends and neighbors living, not according to the Word of God, but the way our sinful hearts want us to live. It's understandable, it's reasonable, but it is an offense to God, and we are to flee that sort of worldly life. Now, you'll be tempted to deny Him by not remaining faithful to the vows that you'll be taking in just a few minutes, by staying away from His holy house, by uh, not engaging in His prayer and praise, by not hearing His Word, that's a great temptation that affects us all. You'll be tempted to deny Him in any number of ways. And there will be times when following Jesus means suffering with Jesus. There will be times when remaining true to your confirmation vows is going to come at great cost to you. But you're called to remain faithful. You're called to maintain that Palm Sunday spirit of jubilation, of pride in your Savior, now and for the rest of your lives, and even unto death. And that's kind of a depressing picture I've painted for you, I know. It's not all going to be struggle. You're going to have uh, fun times. I find joy in coming to Christ's church, being with His people here at Holy Cross, and I'm sure that you will continue to find that as well. God willing, you may meet someone who uh, will start a family with you and you can raise your own kids in the faith so that one day they too will be confirmed and you can share this joy with them as well. I know that uh, for some of you, you have siblings coming up who, God willing, will be confirmed in just a few years. Another uh, cause for joy. Now, there's a lot of joy bound up in what we're doing today, but I want you to be prepared for the assaults of the devil, which are sure to come. I want you to be prepared to suffer with your Savior as you are rejoicing with Him today. But suffering with Jesus doesn't end in the grave with Him. Of course, uh, a week from today, we'll be celebrating Easter Sunday, when Jesus had His real triumph, His triumphal entry not into the earthly city of Jerusalem, but His triumphal entry into the new life to come. His triumphal entry bringing all of us with Him into blessedness before His heavenly Father. Jesus' resurrection is His ultimate triumph, His ultimate glory, and that is what He has promised to you. By remaining true to the vows that you take today, by maintaining faithfulness to your Savior Jesus Christ, by remaining true to Him even unto death, you will participate not only in His sufferings, but also in His glory, in His salvation, in His resurrection at the end. And that is my ultimate prayer for you today and always that you will remain faithful to your Savior, Jesus Christ, that you will be faithful to Him unto death, that you may participate with Him in His glorious resurrection from the dead. And I'm confident that you have what you need to remain faithful to Him, because you're not going through this alone. Of course, you have the support of your families, you have the support of your classmates, you have the support of this whole congregation, and I tell you, you have my support, but you have the support of another that's much more important. You have the support of the Holy Spirit who has been granted to you in your baptism, who has been fostered by your continual learning at His feet, learning the word of your Savior Jesus Christ. He will guide and protect you. He will keep you from error. He will grant you the strength to endure when the going gets tough. 
And I trust that he will keep you in his word and faith unto your end, so that you may enter into everlasting life. So I pray, God, that through the Holy Spirit you endure in true faith in Jesus Christ, that your confirmation vows are not just something that you do today, but something that is a living reality for you throughout the rest of your earthly lives. And I look forward to spending an eternity with you in the life to come. What a glorious day this is. And I hope we can hold on to that glory for a while longer. But even when the glory fades, you still have promises that go beyond all human comprehension. So let us join together as a congregation now and pray for these dear students that they may remain faithful even unto death. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, you have called your servants Catherine and Anna and William to believe in your Son, to be baptized into your holy name, and to inherit everlasting life with him and with us. As they are confirmed today and received into communicant membership at Holy Cross, grant that they may receive his body and blood for their forgiveness, life, and salvation, and that may, they may endure in your word and faith unto their end. Grant that together we may walk safely through this life and come finally to the blessed life to come. We ask it in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.